Hello, it's Cried here with a video on elemental damage, coalescence, and critical element. I think there's also a lot of confusion because just like the burst skill, coalescence and critical element have their own weapon categories. Funny enough, none of these categories ever seem to be the same. So let's take a look at how these two skills work. First up, to understand these two skills, you need to understand a bit of damage calculation and how elemental damage works. Here, I have a Paralysis RTN Greatsword, so it only deals raw damage. The testing dummy has a physical hit zone value of 0.8. Hit zone value is basically what percent of the damage actually gets passed through. The higher the hit zone value, the more damage passes through and 0.8 for physical and 0.3 for elemental is going to be higher than most monster parts you're hitting. Let's do a full damage calculation. This great sword has a raw attack of 225, and I have the power charm in my back and the offensive food buff, giving me 8 extra raw attack. The first hit of a great sword's uncharged slash has a motion value of 78, which is how much damage percent the attack hits for. White sharpness gives us a 32% increase in damage. Finally, the hit zone value is 0.8. This results in the 191.9 damage we see on screen. Now, I'm going to swap over to an RTN Greatsword with the exact same rolls but has 480 water elemental attack. Which element doesn't matter on this dummy? because all of its elemental hit zone values are 0.3. We can do the calculation the exact same way, but with the elemental numbers and some caveats. Regardless of whether you turned off your bloat numbers, the elemental attack on your stat sheet will always be 10 times the actual elemental attack you have, just to make the numbers look good, I guess. Next is the elemental motion value, otherwise called elemental coefficient since this is usually 1, or centered around 1, unlike the raw physical MVs, which are a lot higher. Add in our sharpness multiplier of 1.15. Here, you are probably wondering why the number is no longer 1.32, but 1.15. And that's because elemental damage has its own sharpness modifiers. Purple is from previous games like Road and Rise, and we don't have it in wilds yet unless you're watching from the future. Finally, we multiply it by the elemental hit zone value, which tends to be much lower than the physical hit zone. This is why elemental damage is so monster dependent, because losing 15% off the physical hit zone is only 18.75% less damage, while losing 15% off the elemental hit zone is a whole 50% less damage for elemental damage. Anyways, elemental damage accounts for 16.6 .6 damage from our calculations. Add the physical and elemental damage numbers up, and we get 208.5, which is exactly what I'm getting in-game. Adding the 480 elemental damage increased our total damage for this hit by 8.7%. Now, onto Coalescence, which is thankfully easy to activate in the training room. This buffs the Greatsword's base elemental damage by 30%, resulting in 213.4 damage. Not a lot of increase, since our elemental damage takes up so little of our total damage dealt anyways, which is to be expected because of the elemental coefficient. Since elemental coefficients tend to hover around 1, Unlike physical MVs that vary greatly, elemental damage is a lot better for faster weapons that attack more times. For example, dual blades are known to work with elemental damage much better to the point that their elemental coefficients are mostly nerfed from 1. Let's take a look at Blade Dance 1 first, which still has an elemental coefficient of 1. Compared to the Greatsword, you see a much bigger increase in damage percent contributed by having elemental damage. An increase from 44.3 to 53.6 is a 21% increased damage. Now, if you're worried about the nerfed damage coefficients on dual blades, don't be. Let's use a basic combo with nerfed coefficients to demonstrate what I mean. 
This combo deals 162 damage without elemental damage, and then 204 damage when I add the 270 element on RTN Dual Blades. This is a 25.9% increase in damage, which is more than the increase for Blade Dance, despite having a nerfed elemental coefficient. Why is this the case? To put it simply, this series of hits has MVs of 11 or below, while both hits of the Blade Dance have an MV of 18 each. This means that comparatively speaking, even though the elemental coefficient is nerfed, it is taking up a larger chunk of the total damage. All this is to say, don't worry about elemental coefficients getting nerfed, because it is most definitely factored in by the devs. Okay, now let's turn on Coalescence for the Dual Blades, which bumps our damage from 204 damage to 210. This is a mere 2.9% increase in damage, which is only a tad bit higher than the Great Sword's 2.4% increased damage from Coalescence 3. Why is the damage increase so low if elemental damage is more effective on dual blades? This is because, while the status portion of coalescence is consistent across all weapons, the elemental portion uses different numbers for different weapons, and dual blades is only getting 15% elemental damage boost at level 3. Now, this is a big problem, because the easiest way to consistently activate coalescence is with Gor Magala set when cleansing Frenzy. This means that coalescence, which only lasts 30 seconds, has a low expected uptime of around 30 seconds every 80 seconds. Coalescence 3's expected damage bonus over this period for dual blades is a mere 1.1% increase in overall damage which I think you don't need me to tell you. It's pretty darn bad for 3 level 2 deco slots. Even if it is front loaded and you perfectly end the battle 30 seconds into the second Coalescence's activation with our assumptions, this will still only put Coalescence 3 at a 1.34% increase in overall damage. Of course, I'm using an RTN weapon with 4 physical rolls, so let's check out an RTN weapon with 4 elemental rolls. Instead of 204 damage, I'm doing 202 damage without coalescence. With coalescence up, I reach 210 damage, just like the physical RTN. This does show that coalescence is more effective when stacking elemental damage. But since coalescence is based off of your weapon's raw elemental damage, and doesn't take into account things like elemental skills. There's only so much base elemental attack you can get on your RTN weapon. Just in case you're a dual blades user worried after seeing the damage drop by switching to elemental rolls. No, this does not mean that dual blades suck with elements. It's just that the elemental roll on RTN dual blades is only 20. So it won't be worth it unless the monster is really weak to elements and not as much to physical. I have made an extra chart as a bonus to show exactly how much elemental attack you're getting for each RTN weapon at max for when elemental weapons are more popular. Since coalescence has different percent multipliers for different weapons, it might be best used on weapons that are in the heavier weight class and get 30% bonus instead of 15%, while still having multi-hit moves or fast enough attack speed in their kit. My guess is that coalescence might work best for melee weapons like the charge blade and switch axe, but I don't know enough about their moveset in wilds at the moment to give a definitive answer. That will have to wait for the weapon specific breakdowns. But in general, coalescence is not strong for most weapons because of the uptime and I don't suggest coalescence if you're not heavily invested into elemental damage on your weapon. As for the bow guns, I will cover them separately after covering critical element. Elemental attacks do not crit without critical element, as the base critical damage of the elemental portion is essentially the base 100%, which is the same as doing a non-critical attack. Critical element allows the elemental damage portion of your attack to crit by giving it critical damage. This number is quite small though, as the base critical damage of raw attacks is already 125%.
Just like coalescence, critical elements has different values for heavier weapon types, even though these weapon categories don't coincide with burst nor coalescence. Critical element really doesn't give a lot of damage, as even the higher scaling weapons for critical element only reach 121% at level 3. And these weapons aren't even the weapons that are good with elements. One thing that's different about critical element versus a percent increase in elemental damage is that a percent increase in elemental damage is based off of your base raw elemental attack while critical element is based off of your total elemental attack. For example, if your greatsword has 480 water attack and level 5 burst, the 30% elemental damage bonus from coalescence is still based off 480 elemental attack. Critical element would be a 21% increase to 680 elemental attack, plus the amount you're getting from coalescence. But you see, that's the other problem. For a mediocre bonus, you need to invest into enough affinity and also more elemental damage to make critical elements work. In short, critical element generally doesn't increase your damage by much, and is not worth it if you have something better to slot, like the elemental skills that straight up increase your elemental damage without needing to crit or invest into stacking elemental damage. As an extra note for damage calculation, if you have both Coalescence 3 and Stream Jewel 3, the percent multiplier for elemental damage is multiplicative, making the bonus more effective. The two best weapons for both Coalescence and Critical Element are actually the two bowguns. Bowguns don't have base elemental attacks. Instead, elemental ammos seem to have a pretty large conversion from the base raw of your weapon to elemental. As you can see, Coalescence buffs my heavy bowgun's damage from 36.9 to 42.2, and the light bowgun from 23 to 26.3. In both cases, Coalescence is increasing the bowgun's damage by 14.4%, which is a lot more than the melee alternatives. This is because, at least with my current raw numbers, 47.8% of the damage dealt by the ammunition is elemental taking up almost half the damage. This is a way higher percent of the total damage dealt than any of the melee weapon types. Of course, the bowguns also got lucky and fell into the 30% bracket for coalescence, allowing them to maintain a 5.4% damage increase, even when factoring in uptime from Gore Magala's set. Obviously, critical element is in the exact same boat, Due to a large portion of the damage being elemental, critical element works much better for the bow guns, with heavy bow gun coming out ahead thanks to being placed in the higher bonus bracket. In conclusion, elemental damage in general should be better when monsters with higher elemental hit zone values release, like the Mizutune coming up soon if they use values from the previous game. It's weak to lightning and even dragon. However, even then, Coalescence and Critical Element seems quite weak on weapons that are not bowguns, and maybe other edge cases. Like and subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming breakdowns. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.